Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Uh, following on from my idea yesterday, I thought I'd do a check to make sure that this effort is worthwhile because it is considerable. Um, what I've got in here is tap water. Straight out of tap. So, like most of us, that's my starting point. Now that's going to come out at about 250, I suspect, or thereabouts. It does vary. Yeah, that's 259. So, say a TDS reading of 260, that's my tap water. So, if I didn't do anything with it, that's what my orchids would have to have. And quite honestly, that's higher than the level of feed that some of my orchids get. So that would be um, not ideal, I think we'll call that. My daughter's tap water is nearer 400. <laughs> it does vary. Okay, so I'm drying that off because of the possible effect. Um, right, this water in here is filtered water. Filtered once, yeah? Now that took quite a long time to produce with a jug that size, but we'll have a look and see what that... That should come down to about probably 130, 140. We'll have a look. Okay, that's coming out at 148, so it's come down from 250 something to 140 something. Which is better. But that's, that's still quite high. So that's one pass through the filter jug. Now what's in the filter jug at the moment is that put through again. So that's like a double filtration. So I'm drying this off in between because there's enough drops of water left lying around to affect the reading. So I'm trying to start with a dry glass each time. So this is now double filtered water, which is quite an effort to produce. Honestly, it's a flipping nuisance. I don't really want to have to do this, but I want to see the difference, what, what that difference makes. Not a lot. And it's brought it down to about 110 from 140 something. So the second pass through the filter, quite honestly, is not worth the effort. But I needed to know. So I think, you know, with the consequences of all this calcium getting deposited all around the grow room through the foggers, I'm going to have to take the ball by the horns and use our own water. Now, we're in a warm spell at the moment. I think we're off up to 30 odd degrees again, which in the UK is quite high. So at, at periods of weather like we're getting at the moment, I will get through my RO water at a much more dramatic rate by needing to use it for the foggers. So the RO unit will need to go on more often. But it's only a fine weather problem. When the weather breaks and we get duller weather or we get some rain or things like that, the foggers don't come on hardly at all. So the, um, the use of the RO water goes down to more like normal. So I think I'm just going to, have to take the ball by the horns and use RO water in the filters, which means it's going to go down. Uh, let me think, what have I got? My plastic bottles that I store the RO water in are about 2.4 litres, something like that. They're four pints, English pints, of course, UK pints, the best. But in litres, you know, so that it's universal, about 2.4. And I think I've got around 10 of those and then I've got the spare one of these the one I don't use for watering is also kept full that's now dual purpose because the cats like to drink out of that well at least they're drinking RO water can't be can't be bad for them and it's always readily available because it just lives on the floor so I've got that um, that's probably about eight liters in there something like that and then I've got three five litre containers. So that's the amount of RO water when everything's full. And if I'm gonna start using 12 odd litres a day to fill the foggers up when the weather's hot like it is now, you can see it's gonna deplete my stocks of RO water, you know, literally in about three days. And that's if I don't water the orchids, of course. 
you know, they, you know, if I just water my mounted orchids, <clears throat> I tend to use two of those 2.4 litre bottles, um, roughly, sometimes a bit less, sometimes a bit more, because <coughs> often I find a pot, I just see a pot, like something that's been recently repotted is in quite new bark, it, it's out of step with the types of orchids it's with so it will need watering a bit more often for a while so I'll pick up on a few of those and depending on how many of those it also depends on whether the holy clay pots get watered that day they don't get done every single day but the mounted orchids do so depending on whether the holy pots are included obviously I'm going to use a fair bit more water so it's variable but I'm going to end up on a you know something like a three day RO unit cycle when the weather's hot which is a bit of a pain because normally it's about every I don't know eight nine ten days depending on the weather before I need to get the thing out again and you know obviously I have to be in constant attendance what I do is I put this the spare one under the RO unit so that I can leave it and forget it for a while because it takes quite a long, to, long, long time to fill up and then I use the jug to take the water out of there and pour it into my containers and then I can just leave that for a while again. If I put the containers under the RO unit, you know, some of them the wind will blow it over and, you know, it means I have to go back out there more frequently to check on whether they're full yet. So uh, it's a little bit of a faff, but if I'm around during the day, it's not, you know, it's an unattended task. I only have to be there for half a minute every now and again. So it's no big deal. But yeah, I think I'm gonna switch RO water in the unit I mean, that'll cut down on the algae to virtually nothing, because that ain't going to grow. <laughs> and um, obviously, I'm then producing a clean fog, which if it gets on the orchids, um, it's not going to do any harm. You know, I'm adding calcium into the plants by getting fog on them that's, you know, quite high in calcium. So I, I just want to try and stop that. And um, today is going to be a very rare event, because I'm anticipating the hot weather as it was yesterday, and my plants are gonna get a soak. Two reasons. Calcium dissolves in water, yeah? I mean, can you see it in there? Well, I can't, that's because it's dissolved, yeah? So by giving my plants a hell of a good soaking, any calcium deposits that are on, that are on the leaves, in the main will wash off, but at least will get heavily diluted because I'll use RO water to spray the plants with. And that'll also just keep them cooler and keep the humidity up on a day like today. It's a rare occurrence. I don't normally like getting my plants wet, but I know today they'll be dry, absolutely dry, in a couple of hours. It's not going to do any harm. It's not going to sit in the crowns and start rot. Rot doesn't happen in a couple of hours, mate. <laughs> it takes quite a while to set in. So um, my plants will be long dry. So yeah, so that's today's little game then. I'm going to water the dailies anyway and um, give the whole place a flipping good soak. You know, really, with a sprayer, give them a good soak, not a gentle misting. They're going to get a soak. They're going to get washed off. Now that'll help get rid of dust, which helps with photosynthesis. You know, I envy people who've got their plants out and they get rained on. You know, they haven't got any dust or debris or anything like that. They get a nice wash with clean, warm summer rain. It must do the plants the world of good. Well, anyway, mine are going to get a soak with an RO spray today. And, well, more of a soak than a spray. They really will get washed off with a pressure sprayer, a bit of a blast on all the leaves. Probably only take me half an hour to do the whole grow room, so it's not a big deal. It's going to use up my RO water again, though. But uh, anyway, that's how it's got to be. So uh, just a quick um, TDS reading on effectively three types of water. The tap water, the filtered water, and the double filtered water. The next stage of filtration is what comes out at the end of the RO unit, which is a known factor. You know, that just doesn't change. That comes out with a TDS reading of 10. It doesn't get much lower than that. And that's plenty good enough. I'd need a five stage filter to get that reading down to zero. And quite honestly, that's just overkill. You know, that's for scientific use in laboratories and stuff. You know, not for orchids. 10 is a flipping good reading as a start point. 
I mean, anything up to about 50 is a good reading. You know, there's so little in it, it's virtually negligible, as long as it's no toxins or anything. So, that's what I'm going to do. Right, thanks for dropping by. See you next time. A short one.